Yo, today I want to show you my mixing process and what I do to have clean sounding mixes. I'm still a student of music production, but today I'm just going to show you uh, how my process looks like after one year plus of music production. So yeah, let's hop into it. The first thing that you need is a good pair of headphones or uh, good speakers. I personally use the Bayer Dynamics headphones, uh, but I think there are a bunch of like good uh, headsets out there or headphones and you just need to look them up. I'm not a hardware guy, so I can't like recommend you a specific one. Maybe you like mine, I get the 770 Pro 80 ohm. So I'm personally very happy with these, so you're not gonna go wrong by buying these. As of speakers, I have the HS7 uh, Yamaha speakers. I personally use the speakers uh, because I don't want to have headphones on all day long. And uh, I also get a different feeling from listening to it uh, with monitors sometimes. So maybe when you're listening to the beat with your monitors first and um, the 808 is gonna sound different and stuff so uh, it gives you more inspiration and maybe um, it's gonna upgrade your mix a bit because if you're actually like listening to it uh, in a car or something it often is very like similar to speakers. So just grab a bunch of things you can also listen to it with your phone uh, and go over the track a few times and then you'll hear if the mix actually sounds good on all the different devices. So yeah, that's that. That's all the hardware you need. The rest is basically your ear and what sounds that you use. Using the right sounds is also very important because your mix can be very good, but if the sounds just don't match and don't complement how the loop sounds or the melody you made sounds, then the beat just doesn't sound nice. So pick good uh, like drum sounds. I personally use like the standard ones a lot like the classic Southside hi-hat and the uh, Spins 808. You're never gonna go wrong with these sounds, so make sure to use them. And that way your beats are just gonna like upgrade by a whole lot. All right, so now to the actual mixing. I'm gonna use this example. It's a beat that I made a few like weeks ago, I think. Uh, the loop's from Triple X, so shout out to him. So let's listen to it real quick. Well, welcome back to Triple X. So basically when you're ready with the arrangement of your whole beat and after like splitting up the channels uh, with every like drum sound The thing that you want to do is put every single sound in one like mixer channel If you use a loop where the stems are not like properly mixed Then uh, you need to do it yourself So you need to send each individual stem into a mixer channel in my case the loop was already sounding very good So I just sent it to one channel so it's this channel right here the first one and I also put my drum sounds to uh, other channels. Before I start with the mix, uh, I'm just gonna show you what I put on my master. First, I put on this little fruity uh, EQ just to boost the highs and the mids a bit. I personally like it because my hi-hats are being boosted a bit and just the whole track is uh, getting a bit more high-end. And the second thing that I put on my master is a fruity soft clipper. You can put like any limiter on there. I personally use this one and I put the threshold on minus uh, 26.7 dB and uh, the post gain on 91%. I see a lot of people just using the standard settings of the Fruity Soft Clipper. Uh, I personally like it uh, more uh, when using these settings. So you can copy them if you want to. And yeah, that's the master channel. Um, after like rendering out the whole track, I put on some Ozone 10 um, and do some like final mastering stuff. But today I really want to just focus on mixing and basically the Ozone 10 plugin, the things I changed there are not like huge. So it's just like some minor tweaks where I hear, uh, okay, there should be more high end in this part or uh, things like that. Another thing that I do is I put this EQ on every single melody that I basically put out on every single beat. Basically what it does, if you have been looking at my videos, you've seen it before, um, it just filters out the low end so um, the drums actually have space on a track and they can hit very hard. I always use this preset, but you can also adjust something if you don't like the sound of it. But the important thing is just to create an automation clip and then on the parts where your 808 is not hitting, put the EQ away and where it does hit, um, like put it to 100% throughout the whole track so your drums have space. Okay, so now let's start the mixing process. Here's a little graphic um, that basically shows you 
where your sounds should fit in the mix. But a very important thing to mention right here is you don't have to copy exactly what the norm says. So when I tell you to put your uh, hi-hats exactly on minus 12 dB, then that just doesn't apply to every single track. Using a graphic like this can just show you where the sound should probably be. People that make like mixing tutorials always say like, just trust your ear and um, just try out uh, a few things and uh, look if it sounds good, if you make it more louder or more quiet. And I have to say that is like quite good advice. When I used to watch these type of videos, I always looked for this one secret, but I never really found it. I think there are like plugins out there where you could like mimic um, the same mix from another track that you may like, but even then it probably doesn't fit the whole vibe your beat has. So even though the advice may suck for some people, really try to train your ear and adjust the sounds and adjust the whole mix as you want it to be and as you feel like the beat should sound like. So using this graphic can give us a rough idea on where everything should sit. So we want uh, all the like low end to be very uh, centered in the mono. The hi-hats should be more spread out in the stereo. The vocals are sitting in the mid range and should also not be too wide. And yeah, basically that just goes for every sound. Let's start with the melody. The melody should always be quieter than your actual drums. So I'm not gonna give you like an exact amount, uh, like how loud your uh, like melody should be, but usually it's like around 12 dB and 18 dB, like in that range. Well, welcome back to Triple X. So now to the actual leveling. I like to start out with my 808 and my kick. So the loudest uh, things in my track. For my 808, I don't put nothing on there. I just put it into mono right here. So um, it's more centered like the graphic I showed you before. And I lower the volume a bit because uh, in this case, uh, it just was a bit too loud. I can show you real quick. <laughs> Just put it down a bit and then uh, for the kick you want the kick to be actually louder than the 808 i mean i personally like it you may not like it but i liked my kick to actually hit a bit harder than my 808 so uh, this is what it sounds like you can also put it in mono right here if you want to next you want the clap or maybe it's a snare uh, anything that has like the rhythm the two-step like beat pattern After that, um, maybe if you have a snare in there, uh, you want that to be the next loudest thing. After that, the hi hats. You can also s separate them a bit more, so it's a bit more white. As the graphic I showed you before, it should be a bit more outside, not too centered. After that, the open hat. The open hat should be more quiet than the hi hats. And other than that, that's basically the mix. You can listen to the final product once more. The final thing that I did, I just panned the uh, clap and the hi-hats a bit. Um, I panned the hi-hats to the right side, the clap to the left side. Just to separate the sounds a bit more, so uh, you have a lot more going on when you're listening to the beat. And yeah, that's basically it, but I'm gonna mention it again. This is just the way I do it, uh, and I also switch it up with some of my beats, because sometimes maybe the hi-hat like, is a bit annoying, or the 808 is just way too much. So you just have to go with the feel of it and see like what sounds good and with your actual loop. And yeah, uh, I don't put any effects on my drums at all, basically. So I just use good sounds. You could put some reverb on some hi-hats at like a low percentage, but um, I personally don't like it that much. I just play with the stereo separation and uh, with the like widening of the sounds and stuff. Also panning is quite a good thing to use, but other than that, you don't need much. Just train your ear, um, use good sounds, maybe buy some high quality headphones so you can actually like listen to the beat and hear all the single like micro noises everywhere. Put a limiter on your master so your 808 doesn't clip and uh, yeah, that's basically it. So yeah, I hope you could get some good value out of the video and hopefully upgrade your mix. Mixing really is important because it can really be the deal breaker when an artist is listening to your beat and everything is just all over the place. The hi-hats are way too loud, the 808 is just not hitting and it just doesn't sound like a synthesized like 
music track so yeah if you have any more questions you can hit me up on ig or just like write a comment on this video and uh, if you would subscribe to me that would mean a lot to me and it would boost the channel a lot so that's basically all i need and i've also made a sample pack eternity you can check that out and yeah that's basically it so see ya bye